So when we talk about being continuous, we're looking at whether or not it's continuous at a point. So we'll call that x value c. And again, we can say a function is continuous at a point if the following conditions are met. First of all, the limit as x approaches c has to exist. So when we talk about this limit, is this a one-sided or two-sided limit? Two-sided. So at x equals c, the limit has to exist. So we got to make sure that the limit from the left is the same as the limit from the right. So that's the first part of the definition of continuity. The second part is that f of c actually exists. In other words, you need to make sure at that particular x value, it's not undefined. So c has to be in the domain. So you've got to check, make sure the limit exists. You've got to make sure that the defined value exists. And then the third condition that has to be met for continuity is that the limit as x approaches c is the same as the defined value. So again, these three conditions have to be met in order for continuity to exist at a particular point. So there's two different types of discontinuity that can occur. If discontinuity is going to occur, there's two different types. So the first one is what we call removable discontinuity. So that's your first type. Removable discontinuity occurs when you have a hole. We call it removable because the function's continuous for all real numbers except at that one point. So in other words, if we remove that one hole from the entire graph, it would be continuous for all real numbers. That's why we call it removable. And what makes removable discontinuity by the definition of limits, what creates removable discontinuity, the limit from the right and left are the same, but it's not equal to the defined value. So what happens is what f of c may not be equal to the limit or f of c may not be defined. But removable discontinuity occurs when the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right. However, f of c may not be defined or the defined value is not the same as the limit. So that's when you have what's called removable discontinuity. Non-removable discontinuity is the second category of discontinuity. Um, and actually, in non-removable discontinuity, two things can occur. One is you could have what's called a jump discontinuity. A jump discontinuity is non-removable. Um, again, what happens, what creates the jump, a lot of times this happens in a piecewise function. What happens is the limit from the right is not equal to the limit from the left. All right, so again, right here, the limit from the right is not equal to the limit from the left. That's what creates the jump in the graph. Infinite discontinuity is when you have a vertical asymptote at that particular value. So again, both of these categories, you can say non-removable discontinuity, but a more clear or more um, descriptive type of discontinuity is the use of jump or the infinite. But sometimes they'll just ask you, is it removable, is it non-removable? So if it is a jump, you would simply say non-removable. All right, so non-removable has these two subcategories to it. So any questions on the different types of discontinuity? When you're asking you about continuity, you always start, first of all, by looking at the domain. Because if the domain is all real numbers, then you know that there's no place where it's discontinuous. So if they ask you for continuity, where you start is the domain. Because if the domain is all real numbers, then it's going to be continuous for all real numbers. Unless, of course, you have a piecewise function, then you got to check those jumps. So for example, determine if the function is continuous or discontinuous. If it is discontinuous, categorize it as a removable jump or infinite. So let's take a look at f of x equals x squared plus 1. So like I said, direct connection between domain and continuity. What is the domain of x squared plus 1? All real numbers. The domain is all real numbers. You agree with me. For x squared plus 1, there's no holes, there's no asymptotes, there's no jumps, correct? So if my domain is all real numbers, um, where is it continuous? It's also going to be continuous where? It's continuous also at all real numbers. Okay? So there's no holes, there's no jumps, there's no vertical asymptotes. Alright? So now let's take a look at um, B. 
what is the domain for B? What is the, what is the domain? It's a rational function, so what's that domain going to be? All real numbers except what? 3 and negative 3. So guess what? Where is it going to be discontinuous? So if it's not defined at 3 and negative 3, can it be continuous at 3 and negative 3? No. So I know it's going to be discontinuous at 3 and negative 3. Now the question is, what type of discontinuity is it? Well, what's graphically happening at x equals 3 and x equals negative 3? You have a what? Vertical what? Asymptote. So what kind of discontinuity is occurring at 3 and negative 3? Infinite. So we have infinite discontinuity at x equals 3 and negative 3. And remember, this is actually your non-removable. So any questions on how you can identify where it is discontinuous? Yes, Lauren. A lot of times they'll ask you for exactly where it is, yes. No, no. But most of the time they're going to ask you where the discontinuity is going to occur at any time. Right. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not done yet, so i got to finish oh. the question. Okay? So now, like I said, we agree that we have infinite discontinuity at 3 and negative 3. Now again, <laughs> Lauren, spring, spring off what Lauren said. Make sure you go back and you read your questions carefully. There's a lot of different ways they can ask you about continuity versus discontinuity. They may ask you where is it continuous and the type. Or they may ask you what intervals is this function continuous. So let's see what the directions are. Determine if the function is continuous or discontinuous. So overall, is this function continuous or discontinuous? Discontinuous. It is overall discontinuous. And again, they want us to kind of categorize where it's occurring. A lot of times, though, they're going to ask you for intervals of continuity, um, or they're going to ask you just about the location and the type. Okay? Let's take a look at C. x minus 3 over x squared minus 9. So again, it has the same domain as part B. I know my domain is all real numbers except x can't be equal to 3 or negative 3. But if I factor the denominator, so I know it's also going to be discontinuous at 3 and negative 3. But what's different about part B versus part C? There's a hole. So I have a hole at what? I have a hole at x equals 3, and I have a vertical asymptote where I have a vertical asymptote at x equals what? Negative 3. So now that's going to change the type of discontinuity I have at one of these particular locations. So at my hole x equals 3, what kind of, discon or what, what kind of discontinuity am I having? It's going to be what? Removable. So I have removable at x equals 3, and I have um, infinite this continuity at x equals negative 3. And again, this function will be discontinuous. It's not continuous for all the numbers. All right, any questions on identifying the type and the location of your discontinuity? All right, um, let's take a look at D. So for D, where is my discontinuity going to occur? Discontinuity, again, you don't need to go through the long process of adding these together um, and getting a common denominator. You can if you want to verify that you don't have that hole for removable discontinuity. But right away, I know my domain is going to be all real numbers except what? X can't be equal to what? Negative 3 and 0. So if you want to check for the hole, you have to add these together, multiply my first fraction by X plus 3. So I have 4 times x plus 3, plus 3x times x, all over your LCD of x times x plus 3. So I have 4x plus 12, plus 3x squared. 3x squared plus 4x plus 12, over x times x plus 3. Can I factor that numerator at all? Look at your numerator. Can I factor it once I did my combining like terms? Can I factor 3x squared plus 4x plus 12? Is that factorable? So since it's not factorable, do I have to worry about any holes? No. So what's happening at 0 and negative 3 then? I have what kind of discontinuity? I've asked the we call what kind of, um, what kind of uh, discontinuity? Infinite. 
So I have infinite discontinuity at x equals negative 3 and 0. Okay. So any questions on t? So just make sure if you see a sum or difference of rational expressions, you know where it's going to be discontinuous by the denominators, but just verify to make sure you don't actually end up having that whole um, location. Now, with a piecewise function, this is where you have to be careful. If you look at the functions by themselves, so for example, at 2x minus 1, graphically, when you graph 2x minus 1, what is it? It's just the what? Line. So by itself, when you look at y equals 2x minus 1, are there any holes or asymptotes in the line? No, and there's no jumps. Look at the second function in here, x squared plus 1. By itself, when you graph y equals x squared plus 1, are there any holes, asymptotes, or jumps in that particular function? No. So where would discontinuity occur in this piecewise function if it's going to happen? It's going to happen where zero, where the domain is restricted for both functions. So what we need to check for is we need to check for discontinuity at x equals zero. So first of all, we want to find f of zero. So f of zero is going to be equal to what? f of zero is, which function do I plug it into the first and the second? Second, so it's going to be one. Remember the three conditions that have to be met in order for it to be continuous. It has to be defined, which we just verified it is. And then the limit as x approaches zero has to be equal to f of zero. So remember the limit as x approaches zero, f of x has to be equal to the defined value. For continuity to occur, remember, you've got to satisfy these conditions. So we know what the defined value is. So now, remember, this is a two-sided limit. So we have to find the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of f of x, which we just found. Because remember, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right is dealing with the x value slightly larger than 0, which I just found to be 1. So now I have to find the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of f of x. So when I talk about the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, I'm looking at x values smaller than 0. So where would I plug 0 into the first function or the second one? The first one. So it's going to be 2 times 0 minus 1, which gives me what? Negative 1. So my question to you is this, is f of 0 equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. No, they're not. Because what's happening, what's happening on the right is not equal to what's ha happening on the left. So now, what type of discontinuity is occurring when the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right? What type of discontinuity is it when the limits on the left don't meet? It's a jump. It's a jump discontinuity, exactly. So I have a jump discontinuity at x equals 0, which is your non-removable. <coughs> Remember, what makes the jump is the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right. What makes the removable discontinuity, the limits are the same on both sides, but the defined value is not the same or it's not defined at all. All right, any questions on um, E? Let's take a look at F. So again, we've got this piecewise function, x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. And then what is graphically this x equals negative 1, uh, negative 2? What is it? It's a point. All right. So this first piece of the function is dealing for all numbers for x, except where x equals negative 1. So now if you factor the numerator, I can factor x squared minus 1 into x minus 1 and x plus 1 over x plus 1. So what's happening with this particular function? You have a what? A hole. I have a hole at x equals negative 1. So if I was to graph this function, if I was to graph this all by itself, I know it's just a line with a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of 1. So again, what's the y value of the hole going to be? The y value of the hole is going to be what? How do you find the y value of the hole? Plug it in. So negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2.
So the question was asking me just about continuity of x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. What kind of discontinuity would be happening at x equals negative 1? We would have what kind of discontinuity? A removal. All right. However, it's a piecewise function. You've got to put all the pieces together. So now look at this single point they're giving you. The question is, does negative 1, negative 2 fill in your hole? Yes, it does. So putting those two pieces together, are there any places where this piecewise function is discontinuous? No. So this will be continuous for all real numbers. All right. So they give you this single point in a piecewise function, you identify a hole. The big question is, does that, does that point fill in the hole? All right. And it fills it in, then we, um, then we don't have that removable discontinuity. So let's take a look at G. Oh, this is a typo. Is f of x equal to the absolute value of x over x, where x doesn't equal 0, continuous at 0? And then again, they're giving you x equals 0, it's just x. All right, so let's take a look at this. We kind of did a problem like this the other day when we were doing that. Um, I tried to make a table. So let's just look at a table of values here. Let's graph the first part. So right here, if I plug in 1 for x, What's the absolute value of 1 divided by 1? 1. So 1, 1. If I plug in 2, absolute value of 2 divided by 2 is 1. If I plug in 3, it's going to be what? 1. If I plug in a million, it's going to be what? 1. So what's happening? As I'm approaching 0 from the right, it's coming from negative 1. So now let's take a look at what's happening um, to the left. If I plug in negative 1, what's the value going to be if I plug in negative 1 into the absolute value of x over x? Negative 1. If I plug in negative 2, if I plug in negative 2, 1, negative 1. If I plug in negative a million, negative 1. So when x equals 0, I end up with um, x. So if x equals 0, what's that point going to be? Where's this one right here? 0. So is this function continuous at x equals 0? No. What kind of discontinuity do we have? Jump. So any questions on the how you can check for discontinuity? Again, like I said, pictures are going to be your friend. All right, now let's take a look at, just like limits, ladies and gentlemen, we were looking at a two-sided continuity. You can also have be continuous just from the left or just from the right. So we can say a function is continuous from the right at a number a if. The limit as x approaches a from the right is equal to the defined value. So just like we have the two-sided limits, we have two-sided continuity and we have the one-sided continuity. So the one-sided continuity if it continues from the right. What happens is the defined value is equal to the limit as we're approaching um, a from the right. We would say it's continuous from the left. If the limit as x approaches a from the left is equal to the defined value. And I mentioned this a few minutes ago, a lot of times they're going to ask you where it's continuous. And you would have to state it's continuous on an interval. As long as it's continuous at every number in the interval. If it's only on one side of the endpoint, we understand continuous is the endpoint to be continuous from the right or from the left. So let's take a look at, there are four ways to represent continuity in an interval. Continuous on an open interval, which means we do not include the endpoints. Continuous on a closed interval, which we include both endpoints. Or we're continuous just at one endpoint. All right? Like I said, there's a direct co co um, relationship between continuity and domain. So they ask you where it's continuous, they're pretty much asking you about the domain. So let's take a look at example 2a. Square root of x plus 5. 
What is the domain of the square root of x plus 5? All real numbers what? Greater than or equal to what? Negative 5. Remember how you find the domain of any square root function. You cannot be in the real number system and take the square root of a negative number. So you always take whatever's underneath your radical and make it greater than or equal to 0. So where is it continuous then? If my domain is all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 5, where is it going to be continuous? From where? Negative 5 to infinity. Is it continuous from the left hand side? So again, it is f of negative 5. Again, if you think about this graph of square root of x plus 5. I know graphically I have a shift to the left side. So this is what it looks like. So is f of five, negative 5 equal to the limit as x approaches negative 5 from the right? Which it is. So that's how I know to include that endpoint in my um, continuity. Alright? So any questions about the continuity? So we do include that negative final color because it is continuous on the, on the one side. Okay? Let's take a look at cube root of 2x minus 3. Do you remember what the domain of any cube root function is going to be? Can you take the cube root of negative numbers? Can you take the cube root of 0? Can you take the cube root of positive numbers? So what's the domain of your cube root functions? All real numbers. So where is this then going to be continuous? It's going to be continuous for all the numbers. Like I said, when they ask you about where it's continuous, it's the domain. All right? They're not asking you about the type in this particular direction. All right? Let's take a look at this one. Two divided by the fourth root of x squared minus two x minus eight. So first of all, for this to remain in the real number system, what kind of number has to be underneath the, square, the fourth root? It has to be what? Positive. So x squared minus 2x minus 8 has to be greater than 0. Can it be equal to 0 in this case? No. Why can't it be equal to 0? Because it's in the denominator. So everybody agree with me that, again, the domain of this function has to be where x squared minus 2x minus 8 is greater than 0. So now, how am I going to solve this? What am I going to have to do? I have to factor it. So that's where, remember, I end up doing my number line test. So I end up with x minus 4 times x plus 2 greater than 0. So what do your critical numbers turn out to be? Negative 2 and 4. Am I including negative 2 and 4 in the set? No, because I'm not going to be equal to 0. So when I do my number line test, what kind of numbers will make sure that I'm going to be continuous? It's going to be what? Positive or negative? Looking for the positives. So when I plug negative 3 in, negative 3 minus 4 is negative. Negative 3, 3 plus 2 is negative, and a negative times a negative is positive. So I know numbers less than negative 2 will be solutions. If I plug in 0, 0 minus 4 is negative, 0 plus 2 is positive negative numbers will happen between negative 2 and 4. And then finally, if I plug in 5, 5 minus 4, 5 plus 2 is still positive. So where is this going to be continuous? It's going to be continuous for all real numbers less than negative 2, and then all real numbers greater than 4. So any questions on C? So like I said, they're not asking for the type, they're not asking for the location, of this continuity. They want to know where is it continuous. That means you're just simply stating the domain. Alright, so make sure you're reading the directions carefully because they can ask continuity questions a lot of different ways. Where is it continuous? Or where is the location and the type? Now, let's take a look at D, your favorite log function. What kind of numbers can you take the log of? Or natural log? Can you take the log or natural log of negative numbers? Can you take the log or natural log of zero? No. So there has to be what? Remember, the domain of all your log functions, whatever number is inside your log, has to be greater than zero. 
So I'm going to take whatever's inside my log to find the domain, and I'm going to make it greater than zero. So x is going to have to be what? Greater than what? Four thirds. So then in interval notation, I'll be four thirds to infinity. Again, looking at d, negative 3 divided by the natural log of 4 minus x squared. Again, I know the denominator cannot be equal to 0. So now what I need to concentrate on doing is looking to see um, what is the um, domain of the natural log of 4 minus x squared. So 4 minus x squared has to be what? Greater than what? 0. So how would you solve this? You'd solve this by doing what? Factoring and then you have to do what? Number line test. You guys go ahead and finish that one for me.